So the story begins in Bishopsbourne in Kent. I was doing some excavating when one of the volunteers rushed up to me and showed me a piece of pottery and said, we found this at East Farley, another site in Kent near Maidstone, and we think it's got some lines of Roman writing on it. But I took it into my hands and I moved the piece of pottery around in the sunlight and amazingly, sure enough, there is writing on it. It looks like there's about four lines of what to me looked like it could be Old Roman cursive. If you want to know more about um, cursive scripts, um, you can see the manual of Roman everyday writing. So I took the piece away with me and took it to Oxford. And in the meantime, I asked the volunteer to go back to the Mainston Archaeological Group to ask them whether they could find any more bits of this base of a pot. And sure enough, they looked back in their boxes and they managed to find another piece, which fits neatly. Still not the whole of the pot base, but we've got more to play with now. And before taking it to the centre of the study of ancient documents to do some imaging with it, I asked Oxford Archaeology to have a look and to tell me what kind of pottery it might be. And they said it was made probably in North Kent, so it's local pottery. Um, and it probably dates to the late second or third century CE. And given the context in which it was found, it's probably a third century CE object. So the next stage is to take some RTI imaging of the object to see if we can read the text better than with the naked eye. So let's have a look at the image that we've created through the Superdome. If you're interested in learning more about RTI and the Superdome, you can see the manual and one of our other videos that explains how it works. So here you can see the object in the RTI viewer. And I'll show you a little bit um, of how um, the RTI viewer works. So we can dynamically relight the object. And this is great, especially for fragile objects. This one isn't particularly fragile. Um, but if we had a wooden object, for example, we wouldn't want to handle it too much. And this way, we can give the same effect as of the pitch and yaw that we do in the sunlight by moving around the light source. So in, in some situations, we can see basically nothing of the text. In other situations, certain parts stand out really neatly. So if we wanted, for example, to look um, at this group of letters in the middle, um, we can zoom in on it and move the light around to see um, what, what might work best. And different parts of the text will show up better under different light conditions. We also have the option of using different rendering modes. So that was a default mode, but we could use, say, specular enhancement, which looks, as you can see, really quite different. And that will um, enable us to see different aspects of the 3D nature of the text. So we study the RTI files and look again at the object multiple times. And ideally, we do that with more than one person. One of the things that we did together was to produce a drawing of what we thought we could see. So here's the drawing that we put together. And the work continues. So we're looking at our drawing, we're looking at the RTI files, we're looking at the object itself, and we're trying to work out what the letters are. One way to do this is to create an alphabet table of your own. Can you produce an alphabet of this script? And to help you do this, and sure enough, it is old Roman cursive, you can look at the manual of Roman everyday writing to see, um, to see different types of old Roman cursive. So you try to produce your own alphabet, and then what you can do is transcribe the letters as you think you can see them underneath the parts of your drawing. And then you keep discussing it, keep thinking about it, and slowly these letters start to cohere into words and you start to see where the line breaks might be. Annoyingly, Romans don't <laughs> often put in decent spaces between their words, so it's sometimes uh, quite hard to see where a word begins and ends. So you keep going and you keep going and eventually you start to make some kind of sense, hopefully, out of your text. And there was a bit of a penny dropping situation with this particular text, because as we were starting to read words, we felt as if we might have read something very similar before. 
So here's the reading that was starting to come out of our text. You've got to remember that it's fragmentary, so we don't have the whole thing, so it's not going to make continuous sense. Um, and you can see the square brackets represent parts that are missing. And also the dots under the letters show where we're uncertain about whether we've really read that correctly or not. That's very helpful for other people looking at the text. But we found something that in English might be translated along the lines of my training or my art, or my skill, that's the Ars Mea at the top, has taught me always to speak, perhaps something like politely, to everyone to say greetings. Now this, if you look at those Latin words, looks very similar to this piece of poetry from Roman Binchester, which is copied out a couple of times, once on a tegula and once on a brick, because you can see the same kind of forms again. We've got the docuit in both in the first line. We've got the ars mea bit, perhaps, rendered differently. Um, and then we've got the dicere in both and cunctis in both. So they look very similar. And that's the point that we realised that we might be dealing with verse, a new piece of Roman poetry from Kent. So then lots of questions arise at this point. What is this poetry? Is, are these two texts from Roman Binchester and Kent, completely different ends of the country, are they copying from a single source? Maybe there's a Romano-British poet we don't know about. Or are they independently copying uh, a more famous poet that we know about, Marshall or Propertius or Ovid? And there are some links to some of those authors that we've been able to spot. So who knows exactly what's happening, but we have basically hardly any knowledge of Romano-British poetry. So here's a little bit of evidence to add to the story.